Vet Ketos. Hey everybody, welcome to another Midas Letter live from the backyard of Canada. This is special Ed Molesky, my good friend and co-host. Hello everyone. We are in the heart of Lake Muskoka, or rather, we're in the heart we're, of the Muskoka We're not in Lake District. Muskoka. We're, <laughs> we're awfully dry. In the backdrop, you can see Lake Muskoka, or rather Lake Joseph, and this is the heart of Muskoka. This is what I'm trying to say. And today we're at, in the backyard of Mr. G. Scott Patterson, a Canadian iconic entrepreneur and venture capitalist who, as would any red-blooded venture capitalist with a pulse, has now involved himself in the cannabis space. And he is the chairman of Halo Labs, trading on the NEO under the symbol H-A-L-O. We'll be talking to Scott in just a little bit. Because we're doing these new backyard situations and we're actually now on an island and experimenting with all kinds of different things, uh, Ed and I, Ed and I are going to read the news. And so, we are? without further ado, we bring you the news. Havis Health. Havis? Havis Health. And you. And you launches... Havis ECS first major network strategic communications advisory and training company focused on increasing scientific understanding of cannabinoids. Amazing. My yeah. turn. All right. Jane Technologies, looks like a private company, announces a $21 million Series B funding. They are a retail software company that created the first and largest online cannabis marketplace created the first and largest online cannabis marketplace. Boy, we're not going to chalk that up to a forward-looking statement. We're just going to say that that must be fact because we've never heard of Jane Technologies, so it must be true. Is that a private company? It doesn't have a symbol associated with it in the first line. Therefore, I'm going to take a leap of faith and say that it is indeed a private company. I got to read Look this Look at one. that, Ed. I got to read this one. Still Canna's Polish operations in final stages of crop rotation. Wow. They even figured out a... Polski Ogorki Polski cannabis? Look at <laughs> What are they growing? Wow. They must be growing cucumbers. <laughs> cucumbers, because they're going to make pickles. Still Canna. Now, Still Canna trades on the CSE under the symbol STIL. We have not had any conversation or contact with them, so we don't know anything about them. Maybe if they knew I was Polish, they might warm, well, warm up to I'm us. pretty sure they're going to hear about the fact that we're talking about them on today's show, and they're going to make some effort to right. reach out to the most watched cannabis investment program in the world. Just, just guessing. <laughs> Burio Health launches New York's first same-day marijuana delivery service. Now, this is a CSE-listed company. Symbol is V-R-E-O. And Vireo Health of New York is a subsidiary of Vireo Health International. Led, serious led, deal. led by physicians. A physician led, science focused, multi state cannabis company. There. Inner Spirit Holdings announces six new licenses for Spirit Leaf retail cannabis stores in Alberta and opening of new Spirit Leaf corporate store in Jasper. Now, Inner Spirit, where is that trade, Ed? Jeez, I would say on the inner exchange. Of the CSE, maybe, under the symbol ish. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, let's let's come over around three-ish. Ish. The symbol is ish. Wow. Inner spirit. So they've got stores across Canada. 19. 19 stores. Wow. This is interesting. See, here's the thing. Now the cannabis industry is coming fast and furious. All the promoters from across the board. Yeah. Every market are coming aboard with new deals, new technologies, new schemes to... Raise money. I, I think I was talking to Philip, Philip Schum recently, and he's worked with the CSC, and he says there's about 100 companies that are, that are lined up in the, in the marijuana in space. In the queue. In, in just on the CSC? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Well, what about on the TSS? What about that? What about, the, what about on NEO? 
<laughs> you think you got problems? Yeah. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Okay. So, also. More news. More news. In other news, ParcelPal announces a distribution agreement with Yield Growth Corp. That's Penny Green's operation. ParcelPal <laughs> Technology. Right. Trading under the symbol CSE PKG. Pleased to announce that it has formed an alliance with Canadian cannabis topicals company, the Yield Growth well, Corporation. That's, you know, yield, yield. Yield. That's a good name. What's, that's a great name. That's a fantastic name. You always talk about yield when you're talking about soybeans. What's yeah. the yield per bushel? Per bushel. Actually, that's another conversation. I was just about to go totally, totally divergent on the topic at hand. Look at this. Okay, here's another one. Certera. Certera. Wellness, Wellness appoints Drew Stoddard, Drew Stoddard as Executive Vice President, Director, I'm sorry, <laughs> Direct to Consumer Marketing. Woo! Good one. Drew Stoddard. Congratulations. Good wow. for you. Good for you. That's, I wonder what he's making. I don't know. We should call him and ask him, but there's a picture of him oh, there. Good, it's a good thing we're not in the studio, Drew. We'd have your picture splashed all over the internet and you'd be famous. CBD-based functional drinks charm health conscious consumers. Oh, this is fake news. Never mind. Uh, is that it for the news? Well, let's go to page two. Hey, we got to say that the, 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 just the people talking about Cantrust, it never ends. Oh, well, we could talk about Cantrust ad infinitum. Yeah. So you were suggesting that they were going to stop selling cannabis altogether. Well, they, 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 that, that was announced, I think, on Friday's Globe. And today the stock price decre deteriorated. Deteri right? jumped, deteriorated. I mean, look, what's it worth? What's it worth? Yeah, they're, they're speculating. How, much, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> a thing is worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. Three things are going to happen. Five to six, seven, eight yeah. business days, Health Canada is going to finish their, uh, their assessment of the company, and they're either going to suspend the company, right. or they're going to find the company, or they're going to say, we need more time. If it's the first thing, yeah. Cantrus could go to a dime, and all the shorts will be happy. If it's the second thing, everybody's going to continue with the wait and see speculation. The day traders are going to push me, pull you it up, down, all around. And if it's the third situation, probably it's going to start to rise because a fine is a known quantity. The company's going to pay it out of stock. But the question is, like, what's the effect going to be on the balance sheet? Yeah. Well, they got they got a bunch of cash, don't they? Well, this is the conversation we had. And do they have any cash? And and is this uh, the 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 marijuana growing in the unlicensed rooms? Is yeah. Is that part of their revenues? Well, I don't think they're going to be part of the revenues. And, well, because even uh, be an Antrust extraordinary item. voluntarily suspended sales of the product right. from their, or the, the inventory at the bond operation because some of it might have come from the, the Pelham yeah. operation. So that's the Niagara operation, the Vineland operation. So really, they've really painted themselves in the corner, haven't they? Yeah, shot themselves in the foot. It's really, yeah, shit the bed. Shit the bed. <laughs> shit the bed. Puked down their shoes. What other what, you get the general the general idea. You think they, that, you think that company is about to buy the farm? Buy the farm. They might have to sell the farm just to keep the shareholders happy. I know, I know. Hey, if you're a Cantra shareholder, we'd like to hear your comments in the chat room on youtube.com forward slash Midas letter. And uh, in just a moment we're gonna be talking to Scott Patterson. Is uh, Scott ready over there? Almost. Um, but that's so that was the news for the day. Yeah. Now we're going to look at some uh, some some charts here, and uh, because of the situation with us on beautiful Lake Joseph in the heart of Muskoka, uh, we can't let you see what it is we're talking about. So we're going to do our best to describe what we're seeing, won't we, Ed? Yeah, we what, could we could just sort of make it up, couldn't we? We could basically say whatever we wanted. Now, uh, full disclosure. Ed and I are market participants. We're not journalists. We're generally conflicted. All the companies you hear about on this show, we might own a piece of, we might buy some stock in, we might have them as a client. So yeah. just consider that. Do your own due diligence, first line of defense, and always consult a registered professional advisor in your jurisdiction, preferably a broker if you want to get broker. No, just kidding. Um, in other news, let's see. Big cannabis news today. Uh, John Boehner, leading the National Cannabis Roundtable in the United States, uh, submitted a, 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 a plea uh, you, uh, basically urging the federal government to deprohibit cannabis at the federal level. So the National Cannabis Roundtable has John Boehner as its chairman and a, a bunch of other industry participants. Right. And uh, so a, a, not a non-influential group. B big item in the globe today, though. I, They're talking about how this can trust thing is going to cause 
more bottlenecks in that process in the U.S. In the U.S.? Yeah. Pinterest doesn't operate in the U.S. No, I know, but they're saying that's going to slow things down over there. Really? Yeah, because uh, just the potential for uh, because there's slight of more scrutiny of yeah, uh, you know, operations. I mean, they got the Canadian government's going to have to get this right. Well, the Canadian government's been trying now for five years. I think they've done a pretty good job considering. Yeah, this is an industry yeah. that's been underground for five thousand years, and uh, there you have it. So, quick shout out to our sponsor, Halo Labs, trading on the NEO under the symbol. Uh, H-A-L-O, uh, trading in the United States, but you're going to have to look that up because we're not allowed to talk about U.S. symbols on this show. Um, but Halo Cannabis is a extractor and producer of consumer packaged extracted cannabis goods in California, Nevada, and Oregon. They're vertically integrated. Check them out at halocanna.com. Now, without further ado, our guest, our interstitial. Have an interstitial. Are we interstitialing? We're back now, and uh, I'm here with Scott Patterson. Scott Patterson is the chairman of Halo Labs. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Scott, you have you guys here. Yeah. Scott, it's, uh, it's hey. an amazing my old, place my old you've friend. Got here. Thank Jeez. you for having us. I worked with Scott, you know, for probably six, seven, or eight years, something like that, at, really? at Yorkton, uh, Yorkton Securities when you were the chairman and the, uh, the, the CEO. The CEO and the the, it was the kick-ass shop on the street, without a doubt. It was. It was a leading it was technology oh. investment bank in Canada for, what, five years? Those were the days. Those were yeah. the go-go days. The deals were yeah. coming in fast and furious. That now, Scott, great. it's no surprise to see you now have uh, put your effort behind cannabis because, obviously, cannabis, uh, Canada, cannabis is a hot space. How did you come to settle on Halo Labs as the company that you were going to lead into the, into the fray? I was really convinced, first of all, I've you know, been following the sector from early days as a public, uh, from the public markets perspective and uh, you know, watched with, and still do, watch with great fascination how some people think it's incredibly overvalued, some people think it's just the beginning, and of course that's what makes a market. Uh, but I think there was a real sea change as legalization occurred in Canada and the kind of path towards real fundamentals becomes uh, something that people can track and really put more conventional uh, metrics associated with, which is why it's so exciting to see so many Canadian companies uh, stretch their aspirations and their wings outside of Canada, and obviously with restrictions in the U.S. For the Canadian LPs, most have gone to Europe. But something was really clear to me uh, a couple of years ago, which was the U.S. opportunity uh, was a huge uh, opportunity. And so I was on the lookout for an entity that was in business, uh, high quality people in the, ideally not in the pure cultivation area. And uh, I was introduced to the Halo Labs people and uh, my, my friends at Canaccord encouraged me to, to get involved and there was a kind of a marriage and, uh, and off we went. Sure, now what about, what, what was it about Halo Labs specifically uh, and their position in the industry that, that made you say that those are the guys that I'm gonna put my money on? Yeah, I think, I think two things. First of all, California, uh, as, as I think most people know, California uh, as a market in cannabis is, most people think it'll be about 30% bigger than all of Canada. So the fact that Halo uh, was ready and uh, to be licensed in California with roots in Oregon. Now, Oregon gets a, a bad rap because it was an early state with respect to recreational cannabis, it became incredibly competitive. It remains competitive, although things are abating somewhat that from that perspective. Just to give you context, there's almost as many dispensaries in Oregon as there is in all in California. Wow. Uh, you and know, and there's only four or five million people there, right? About four million people in Oregon, wow. and you know, what's the number in California on 34 uh, million like odd people. So, uh, but that is changing in Oregon. But Halo's roots, starting in early 2016, led by Kieran Sadu, fantastic CEO, great guy very hardworking, knows everybody in the business. 
uh, he and his team had focused in Oregon, and they got through the competitive environment unscathed. Now, they weren't making big money. They were still losing money, but most people went bankrupt, uh, or many people went bankrupt in Oregon. And then the ability to transition and still be stable, and things are improving in Oregon for the company quite materially, uh, into Nevada to a small degree, but really with a big emphasis in California. So first was the California focus, and then secondly was the extraction business. Um, you know, many people think cultivation will be a commodity. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. And the same thing may occur with respect to extraction, but it is more complex. There's a, there's a real value proposition, particularly on what type of extraction. Our company focuses on butane, which is not even permitted in Canada. It's a very dangerous way to extract cannabis, as you probably know, so there's extra safety precautions. And in theory, you're going to capture more margin by virtue of playing in the higher value area. And many people believe, which I tend to, that edibles and different forms of consumption are going to play a big, big role in the market. That's already proving to be the case in California. And uh, Halo having those two things, that California focus with the pedigree of having succeeded in Oregon, so that geographical focus, and the extraction business, which is an area that I think has got uh, huge potential. Sure. Um, now, one of the interesting attributes of Halo is that in Canada, it trades on the NEO exchange. And I'm watching the, the comment flow on the comment board on our on your YouTube channel and people are saying well what is NEO how do I find NEO what's what is the deal with NEO so what is it about the NEO exchange why would you trade on an exchange in comparison to the CSE and the TSX is best described as obscure well a uh, little historical disclosure uh, back in the era that I worked with Eddie when I was uh, chairman and CEO of Yorkton. I was also chairman of the Venture Exchange and vice chairman of the Toronto Stock Exchange. So I'm a big fan of the Canadian capital markets. I think I'm a, a student of the capital markets here in this country. I love following our progress. Uh, I'm, I'm one of those guys that thinks at the core it's all about capital formation and job creation. And, um, and I like all the exchanges and I don't mean to sound motherhood sure. about sure. it. I really don't. Uh, but the Toronto Stock Exchange took the position early on for legal reasons that they would not uh, list companies, public companies that had U.S. operations. That's understandable. It was a big break for the CSE, the Canadian yes. uh, Stock um, uh, Securities Exchange that was making its own momentum and headway. It was a big, big break for them. But in the background, there are other exchanges in this country, and the only other one that was offering listings was NEO. Uh, their leader, Josh Schmidt, is a fantastic CEO, very forward-looking guy. Uh, they've got uh, other very strong, talented people there. Scott Davidson running... Uh, running listings. Perry DeLise, many people know on Bay Street, is the chairman of the NEO Exchange. Perry's and, the chairman. Yeah, he's the chairman of the NEO Exchange. And one thing that they decided to do as a business decision was to have level two quotes be free globally. Hmm. So if you're in New York or Hong Kong or whatever and you want to punch up Halo, you're going to get a level two quote for free. You would only get that from the other exchanges if you paid for that data feed. And what many people don't know is even their stockbroker is getting delayed feeds. Today, in Canada, major brokerage firms, sometimes the brokers right. don't even that, know. That's true. They are that's getting true. delayed feeds of CSE I, and other. It's pretty amazing. I have brokers call me because I have uh, real time. Real time. And they, could you tell me what? In California. And that's, that's a remarkable achievement in a market like California that is characterized by not hundreds but thousands of producers of vape products many of whom are not licensed but nonetheless competing with the licensed producers um, and for me Kieran's approach to creating a, a path forward for him and his shareholders is is based on his pursuit of novel technologies and delivery systems and I'm referring now to the uh, soon-to-be-announced Shatterizer and DabTab product suite, which is essentially a ceramic-encoded precision dose of any kind of extract delivered in a very compact and single intensity of a super-concentrated dab head, whereas this is the first time you can do that now, and that's why I think this is going to be wildly successful. So. Um, what is, is that, is that the strategy behind the company? Well, first of all, just, just you know, on, on dabbing, uh, what surprised me as I learned about the business is that the majority of people that dab are actually doing it for medical purposes. Oh, wow. So the way you described it is what I thought, you know, this is for the kind of high end, get a nice hit, but it's actually got real medicinal value to get that 
uh, hard um, hit, I suppose. So it's going to eliminate the pain. Or the it's going to be helpful in many respects because of the kind of the uh, the rigs is what uh, James is referring to. You, you show up with this big glass thing and there's torches and there's all these kind of things that have made it historically different. No, I, I'd, I'd position Halo a little bit differently. I'd say that's the call option on the company. Right. What I'd say about Halo, which is kind of nuts and bolts, is this steady business in Oregon and we're on the lookout for how do we build that both organically. We are expanding into more dispensaries there organically, but we are on the lookout for things that we think could fit well. We do think somebody will show up as the major player in Oregon, and why isn't it us? We've got a foothold in Nevada. Uh, it's not an aggressive area for growth for us for right now. It's very tough to source trim at reasonable prices in Nevada, but we're in, I think it's 22 dispensaries of the 65 in the state right now. So we're kind of, we want to just stay there. But California is where we're very focused, and it's a combination of, of bulk uh, distillate, uh, resin, and these are sold on a wholesale or white label basis to other providers, which was kind of what you're referring to earlier, as well as some of our, our, our own products. In the background, we partnered uh, in connection with the Dab Tabs, and we have this exclusive license in multiple states and licenses to uh, find other licensees and other uh, companies gets a product like this and it becomes sort of a hit, the stock will go ballistic. I, listen, that's why I say it's a call option. By the way, there is one other licensee directly with the other company on the East Coast for a okay. few states, and then we have the uh, the core states we have, and then the rights to, to relicense that I mentioned Canada, where we've been working uh, uh, with some parties in connection with that. But that's kind of the thing here. I mean, we don't know whether you know we uh, uh, you know it's it's kind of public knowledge that there's an expectation we'll do somewhere in the 50, 40, pardon me, to 45 million U.S. in revenue this year. Yeah, uh, we were putting out monthly uh, revenue. Uh, press releases, um, you know, we uh, we were we were we were asked to not do that unless there was more context associated with that. I, I understand that, so we haven't been doing that, but we continue to uh, we continue to be very very happy with what's happening on the ground, obviously with the company, and we'll have our Q2 results out uh, soon. But assuming we're uh, our, our guidance in that connection is is reasonable, stocks and, cheap. Well, it, on a multiple basis, you know, I yeah. look at it. We're trading at kind of two ish times. Uh, this year's revenue, including uh, some convertible and ventures, we have standing. Is... Yeah, and there's no reason why that we're not growing 50 to 100 percent potentially next year with respect to our core business. Then the question is, and I'm not even talking about the Buffalo uh, Buffalo uh, acquisition that we've recently announced in Lesito in Africa, which has enormous potential in South Africa, other parts of Africa, and going into uh, Europe. But the Dab Tabs, I know our CEO and much of our team, uh, they think it's going to be a blockbuster product. It's, not, it's really cool because, as you say, it, it looks almost like a you know, a manufactured aspirin, and it fits perfectly. Today, it, you've got to kind of jury-rig it into what you would fit it into, but coming with the right cartridge for it, it could be the game changer uh, with respect to certain aspects of the way people consume the product. How, how long was Halo private before uh, you got involved, Scott? It was started in early 2016, and I uh, was approached about a year later. Okay. About a year later. So I got involved, uh, groomed the company, or helped groom the company with the management team for the next year, and then we uh, we took it public. Yeah, we met uh, Kieran in England. I met him in England. You met him prior to that, obviously. Yeah, yeah nice guy. Yeah, okay. So, Scott, uh, tell me from, so the shareholders, the investors want to know, is Halo going to be able to reach 50% or 100% more revenue without raising more money from capital markets? Uh, that's, uh, that's a great question. The answer is probably no. Now, the company does have a lot of warrants outstanding. There's uh, a lot of warrants, uh, something in the neighborhood of 20 million, around 50 cents. Uh, not around 50 cents, at 50 cents, so that's, Canadian. That's 10 million bucks. And there are a number of warrants associated with our original financing when we went public, which was a unit at 40 cents with warrants at 80 cents. Yeah. So uh, we were starting to get some warrants exercise when the stock was up at 75 cents, which is understandable. Markets pulled back. Our stocks actually outperformed uh, pretty materially uh, the U.S. peers and the broader kind of cannabis market in the last month as this kind of downturn's uh, taken place. But we're widely not known, which is one of the reasons why we like the opportunity yeah. to tell our story and have people check it out, learn about it, follow it, see if they like the trajectory of what we're doing. And the other thing is the intention of this company is to be, is to be aggressive in the M&A world. You know, there are a lot of opportunities out there right now because there's so many people doing various things in the business. We, we'd like to stick as much as possible to core competencies and likely core jurisdictions. 
Africa was a big decision. You know, that's on the other side of the world. Sure. At the same time, this would be like talking about this in Canada in, you know, 2013, 2014. Uh, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think there's only th there's only five or six licenses in Lesito, period, for cultivation and production. Three other Canadian groups are there, uh, Canopy, Afria, and Supreme, mm -hmm. and now us. And we're taking a very aggressive position with uh, acquiring all of uh, Buffalo and bringing on this incredible uh, women, uh, woman, uh, uh, Louisa, Louisa, yeah. Louisa uh, uh, Magello, who's, uh, you know, CNBC called this woman uh, the African businesswoman of the year in 2016. Very well regarded in Africa, incredibly well respected. I think when you guys were in London, she was on the BBC. I mean, this is the kind yeah. of woman that can bring big profile to the company. Scott, you've been around stock markets for a long time. Baby what's diapers, the, what's the, diapers. What's the float of this uh, company? It's about 100 million shares, no, no, but it's pretty tight. Eh? No, it's more than that now because we've made, we, you know, okay. we've done a number of things. Uh, we've got about 185 million shares outstanding okay. now. So that's about a market cap at 55 cents of about uh, 90 million. And we had done a $20 million convertible debenture issue at 65 cents, of which 7 million's already been converted. So that's in the share count. So there's another $13 million of convertible debentures outstanding at 65 cents. And management owns a lot of stock. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, these things, it's, you have to get a lot of capital, obviously, to build these sure companies. And these companies largely are still losing money. And we're still losing money. We're, we're hoping that that gap uh, continues to narrow. Uh, some of it is about market share. Some of it is about getting on the dispensary. You know, I mentioned Nevada. It's a very tough market, but we think strategically it's smart to be there. But we're not making any money in Nevada today. We're making really good gross margins in California. These okay. are business decisions. So what needs to happen before Halo becomes profitable? Well, uh, you could get there today as a company. You know, you sit around our boardroom and you could say, you know, this swath of people that are doing financial analysis on other jurisdictions, on M&A opportunities, on all these types of things, including DabTabs as an example, the decision to go into that, support that business, launching it. Think about all the money we've spent in connection with that. It's brought in very little revenue, a few hundred thousands of dollars as we've just launched the product. So you could say there's a whole swath of our costs and you could get rid of those, and I think we could we could get to cash break even pretty easily. On the other hand, uh, you know the thesis in this business is being first mover advantage is important, uh, shelf space is important. Who really owns? There's a big jostling going on in California. Is it the dispensary that really is the power? Is it the distributor that holds the power? These are fat, and some of the MSOs are trying to do everything. Uh, and it's stuff we're trying to figure out, of course, all day long. So the path we're currently on is drive revenue with a gross margin. And uh, and you'll get to uh, you'll get to cash break even in due course. Hmm, you bet, Scott. Let's leave it there for now, and uh, we're going to be covering Halo Labs obviously throughout the next few months as our principal sponsor. And so, thanks very much for your input, and thanks very much for having us up there. Uh, it's good to have you here in the uh, like you said, the heart of Canada. Pat I was going to wear my We Pat the North Camp. We the North shirt, but I got my Lake Joseph, uh, Lake Joseph in Muskoka. It's a beautiful day as always. Good you to bet. See you boys. Thanks. Okay. Great place here. Let's talk about Aurora. Recently, your financials, you've more or less delivered a Here are the headlines moving markets today. If you're lucky to buy it uh, three days ago at 37 cents, and you I think it has a it. lot to do with uh, some of these smaller names Ooh. giving really Recreational cannabis is here. It's yeah. quite dry. So I'm going to eliminate the stocky bits. To Pat Camp at Lake Joseph in the beautiful heart of Muskoka. In It's not really northern Ontario. It's sort of southern northern Ontario. And if you haven't been here, it really is a unique piece of Canada, isn't it? Well, it sure is. It's part of the Canadian Shield, uh, unlike the rest of Ontario, which is yeah. more or less characterized by rolling hills at the best, if not completely flat and an escarpment running off of the lakes. This is probably the most uh, topographically diverse. Yeah, yeah. and I section. think I think a lot of money that came here originally came from Pittsburgh, the steel industry, back about a hundred years ago. A well, a lot of the yeah, actually, a lot of guys who first had built cottages here were uh, were bankers from J.P. Morgan as well as uh, some of the executives around Inco because J.P. Morgan financed Inco there in the suburbs. There you go, and that's how actually the place first got started, but. All 
I'm not going to say every single hockey player and professional athlete out of Canadian yeah. history has a place here, but mostly, there, mostly they do. There's some, there's some Hollywood people here. Yeah, there's lots well, of. Well, you're uh, here. Well, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We're here. Um, so, Ed, let's take a look at what's going on yeah, in the. It, uh, what's uh, what's Cantrest doing today? Cantrest, let's not talk about Cantrest anymore. They got they got bigger fish to fry. Okay, let's okay. leave them alone. All right. They're going to do what they they do, and uh, you know they've they've sort of already been taken out to the woodshed. I, I can't help but think though that a lot of the like the, the deterioration in in equity values over the last few weeks is directly linked to to this uh, problem. But uh, anyway, let's leave that alone. Yeah, um, there are bigger problems out there. Uh, in you the want to hear about my problems? Sure, let's hear about your problems, Edward. <laughs> uh, in cannabis news in the United States, uh, the CNBC was reporting earlier today that cannabis is gaining momentum in Asia. Now, this is one of the interesting things about Halo's strategy about going into Lesotho is proximity to Asia relative to, you know, Canada and the United States. Sure. It's, it's probably much more likely that you're going to be able to move product in the Chinese market. Now, do you think that uh, do you think the Chinese right now grow fifty percent of the world's hemp? And so, in terms of the CBD market, I think that a lot of the investors in U.S. hemp plays are going to be disappointed because the global marketplace, I believe, is going to be dominated by Chinese extracted CBD for the simple reason that they already produce fifty percent of the global hemp supply. Uh, hemp's pretty is a is quite a sturdy. Well, it's cannabis sativa. Yeah, and so so it can be grown. Like, what is there a special climate that's needed? I guess it grows just about everywhere. The more daylight, and the more uh, you know, the, the more time within the optimum range of fifteen to thirty degrees centigrade. Yeah, the bigger a plant you're going to get, and the bigger the plant, the more, more the, yield, more hemp, more <laughs> more hemp. So, I mean, but when it comes to like the uh, the THC products that are pretty much, look, we've got a seaplane going by. What? Is that the plane that dropped us off? Wait, what? come back, bring beer, bring beer. Yeah, my, my, I was at a birthday party for a buddy of mine in uh, London on the weekend, and his father is uh, having some issues with Parkinson's. Parkinson's. And, you know, there's visible shaking in, this, in one of his uh, limbs, and he's been taking uh, marijuana yeah. And uh, he's taking CBDs as well as THCs. You know, he's happier than a pig and shit, and his hands don't shake. Well, uh, that's... There, well, you know what? It's, 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 it's works. Yeah. The, uh, the medical implications for cannabis are, are in their infancy in terms of the global perception. Yeah. And uh, the stock market at even, call it, $200 billion in value reflects that infancy. Because if you consider that a large part of the opiate complex is going to re be replaced with a, a CBD or cannabinoid regime, as clinical data emerges, demonstrates clearly the opportunity globally for the medical implication. Now, Constellation Brands would have something to say about that because they've bet rather heavily on the recreational aspect. Right. But only from the U.S. market perspective, I think, or predominantly, I shouldn't say only, but predominantly. Yeah. Um, Alan Brockstein published an interesting piece in uh, Forbes today, uh, and he he is uh, he titled it "A Walk Through the Cannabis Stock Graveyard." And it's interesting because uh, you know he's basically characterizing all failed stocks as being run by uh, greedy and opportunistic uh, promoters. And uh, I don't think that's quite a fair categorization. I'm just going to take issue with, on that with you, Alan, and I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk about it in person. But, uh, you know, everybody who tries is not going to succeed, and it, they're not necessarily going to fail simply because they're greedy and opportunistic. Um, if we look at what happen what's happening right now with CanTrust, I said we weren't going to talk about them. I guess I lied. But uh, would, would you, is that greed and opportunism, or is that just incompetence? Or, or is it is it again another example of when you have a new industry that's uh, no, nobody knows how to value, mm -hmm. and and because there's so much money out there that's been printed by all the central banks, right. if that money starts to go into a small area, that area 
explodes. Right. And and values get, you know, way ahead of themselves. And the only reason I say that is because if they didn't get ahead of themselves, they wouldn't have come down. Sure. So, you know, it happens. It happens. We saw it in the, in the dot com, uh, in the dot com world at the turn of century. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Um, you know, Alan does point out that most of the uh, scams are on the uh, on the OTC, not on reputable exchanges like NEO, CSE, and the TSX. So, that's that's a good good point on his part. Um, now, do you think that there's other factors that will come to bear on the cannabis industry globally in the near term that are going to cause a lot more company failures? Uh, you, you know, I, I think that, in, you know, the only thing I think of is that we're coming up to a point where there's gonna, they're going to start bringing in different products in Canada. Yeah. So I think that's important. Okay. Okay. I think that's going to, you know... Uh, allow maybe people to relook at uh, because there'll be different revenue streams again, right? So I think that that's important. Um, but a lot of other countries are going to step into this too because everybody's, you know, like we 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 heard from a gentleman that said every, everybody's got pain. Like a lot of people have pain. Are you in pain? I'm not, but I smoke a lot. What about of the pain of living? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's simple, well, easy to get rid of. We don't have any of that because we smoke weed every day. I know, I know. <laughs> Jay Z was named chief brand strategist at one of California's leading uh, cannabis companies. What do you think about this, this, uh, this propensity for cannabis companies to align themselves with pop music stars from the A list? Yeah, music stars, pol top politicians, uh, like, well, like you know, Ernie Eves. <laughs> okay, John ba John Boehner is a good, great example. He's now chair of the National Cannabis Con Ca yeah. uh, Council, National Cannabis Roundtable, and he's probably the biggest U.S. government is federal he a, government. Is he a user? Is John is John Boehner a user of cannabis? Yeah. I couldn't answer that, Edward. I haven't had that conversation with him yet, but I'm going to. Um, so we'll hopefully our next one of our next targets is to do this from John Boehner's backyard. Yeah. John, if you're listening, we're coming to yeah. your backyard, invited or otherwise. Yeah, in Washington. <laughs> um, yeah, but so that's, uh, you know, that's one of the things that you, you see. When you see publicly traded companies trying to align themselves with celebrity, it's generally a sign that the market is getting a little long in the tooth. You, you know what? It can only get so big. Um, and uh, it's a lot bigger now than it was. But, I mean, it, we, we've had a big correction. Through that. Yeah, for sure. Um, looking at the cannabis indexes now, we're just going to take a quick overview of what the market looks like. It has gone completely red now for the day. Oops, let's just make sure this isn't two days ago. This is actually July 12th I'm looking at. Okay. As, as usual, I'm So uh, today's the, the 16th. Today's the 16th. So that was four. So four days ago, the large cap index was down 10%. Fast forward to today. And the large cap index is up 1.21% to 91.85.84. The small cap index is up slightly 0.02%. The venture index is up 1.29%. And the CSE index is down 0.15%. So which company do you think, before I click through to the next screen, is most responsible for this rise in the large cap index? I'm going to take a wild guess. And I'm going to say Canopy Growth. Canopy. Survey says, oops, wrong button. We're going to have to go back here. Go to index page. And if you're wondering what indexes we're looking at, these are the Midas letter cannabis Canada, Canada, Canadian cannabis indexes. And you can find them at MidasLetter.com forward slash cannabis. Um, so the biggest performer is actually Aurora has bolted on Oh no, sorry, Organogram has added 6.8%, up 54 cents to 8.46. They had a big day yesterday too, didn't they? They did, and followed by Aurora Cannabis is up 2.35%, or 22 cents to 9.35. Followed by True Leaf Cannabis, up 1.77% to 13.79, up 24 cents. So, of the 10 companies listed in the large cap index, eight are green. Two are red, including Hexo and Green Thumb Industries. What do you think about them apples, Ed? Well, how about them? Are there apples? any any? Uh, there's green. There's red. Are there any any orange? Orange apples? Like caution. It's, you're comparing apples to oranges? Yeah. <laughs> 
That's uh, that's Did you ever, not you ever used to take a little piece of apple and throw it in your bag of weed to keep it moist? Did you ever used to do that? I uh, used to use a carrot, actually. A carrot. Actually, I've used carrot. I've used bread. I've used... I don't think it? I've ever used apple. Right? No. Dry, dried bread? No, moist bread. Moist bread. Fresh bread. It's got to okay. be fresh bread. Okay. Um, so, let's see. What else is going on here? This page is taking a long time to load. One of the downsides about being out in the wilderness. Um, what, what's, uh, what's canopy growth at, actually? What's the number? Is it... Uh, well, I just went, uh, what you mean, what's the price right now? Yeah. So we're having an internet issue here, so I can't tell okay. you precisely. Okay. I'll tell you that. But uh, 46, let's look at 4620, right. Razor says. What's going on? With it's bounced a little bit, right? From where, where it was, it, it sort of dropped in concert with everything, and now it's bounced a little bit. Yeah, could be. Is that a boat going by, Ed? That's Das Boot. Das Boot. What All right, so now we're looking at the small cap index, and let's see who is the big loser. Cantus yeah. Holdings down another 11.06%, 354. You got smoked, didn't you? you yeah, gave yeah, it all I, back. I, no, I gave you got uh, a yeah. score at the beginning yeah. of the week. You got smoked right up the Well, it's only of the head. Tuesday. It's only, <laughs> that's right. It's a good. Yeah, point. I talked myself into thinking to have a couple days in a row, and we didn't. Okay, so do you think that there's now going to be another bump to the you, upside? You, you know what? I'm going to leave it alone because I think there's just too many. Like if the federal government came out and said, you know, we got to close these guys down for a while, this thing is going to drop. Well, this is the thing. Don't you think, from from one perspective, Health Canada needs to make an example of exactly. what could arguably be categorized as a repeat offender? But 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 you know, like Bruce Linton's comment about getting some people from the industry and saying, hey, this could happen. You know, maybe that's needs to be done. But what if they say? Hey, shut well, it down for get, three months. Yeah, exactly. That could uh, well, that could that could make the uh, that could make the company a buy. But so that the problem with that is, and this is a good point, who gets penalized if you shut down Cantrust for three months? Nobody really, except the shareholders. And is it fair for shareholders who have no say in management to be penalized by Health Canada for essentially a, either a breach? in management well, procedure or a willful breaking of the rules. I'm sure the regulators are thinking about all these. You think the regulators care about shareholders? Uh, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> you know, maybe <laughs> Let's they hope so, maybe, eh? maybe some of these regulators are shareholders themselves. Wow, you would think so. And 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but hasn't CanTrust been one of the companies that's been the biggest involved in the CBD side with medical patients? Uh, I couldn't answer that. To, for me, Cantrust is renowned for its uh, its medical or its its pharmaceutical grade cannabis, which is high in THC. They do have some higher CBD products. I haven't tried them. Okay, my, okay. My CBD goes to but, company but, is what, Green. What do they have? Fifty thousand. They have fifty thousand people in their Green that, Relief is my CBD go to. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so. Um, if you guys out there want to ask us any questions, you want us to direct any questions to uh, Scott Patterson, the chairman of Halo, P feel free to enter your questions into the comment uh, box at uh, youtube.com forward slash Midas letter. Um, now, we're going to take a look at some of the, where the hell did that go? <sighs> Small cap. So let, let's fo keep focusing on the small cap index here. Pretty sure I got another screen up. That's all right. So Cantrest lost 11.06%. Chemsys International down 15 cents or 9.2% to dollar uh, 48. Now Chemsys, we had we've had a, is that Chemsys from the West Coast? No, there was another one. Chemistry. That's the one I keep confusing them with. Uh, Sproutly Canada lost four cents, down 7.14 percent to 52 cents. Uh, to the upside on the small cap index, Tilt Holdings is leading the charge, up 15 cents or 18.29 percent to 97 cents. Uh, Planet 13 Holdings tacked on 10 percent today, up 26 cents to two dollars and seventy cents. And Chiron Life Sciences, another one of our sponsors, is up 8.78 percent or 18 cents to two dollars. And twenty-three cents. Still a lot of volatility. Chiron was down to a dollar seventy-two or dollar seventy-one a few days ago, and here it is two forty. Set that seventy-cent move. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. When did we buy that? 
Um, organogram stock is uh, rising even as the sector is more broadly a little bit weak. I think, I think you know, as time goes on, uh, Shareholders are going to become more discerning. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to they're going to start looking at things like, you know, revenues. Are revenues growing? Yeah. Um, have you been following the uh, clinical studies suggesting that cannabis treatment counters addiction? Have you heard of this? I, I think we've talked about it uh, casually. Mm -hmm. So, so are you are you sort of implying that maybe it's going to have implications for people that are hooked on much bigger drugs? Well, so they are currently an Australian, for example, in the news today, news out of uh, Science Daily says that an Australian study has demonstrated that cannabis-based medication helps tackle dependency on cannabis, one of the most widely used drugs globally. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> no. you, are you saying they're gonna use cannabis to combat cannabis addiction? Yeah. Isn't that like call the pot calling the kettle black? I think that's like, like the fox is watching. That's the like chickens. saying, "Hey, you got a problem with alcohol? How'd you like a glass of gin?" <laughs> that's right. You need to drink more gin to get you know rid what? of your alcoholism. You got a, your problem is you're not drinking enough. Jeff W., one of our viewers, says regulators care about regulations. He's talking about yeah. in reference to yeah. our previous yeah, that's, comment. Uh, that's that's true. Quick shout out to some of our regulars here: Jeff W., Carl Bowden, Nika Domi. Hi, Nika. She's actually pretty much now going to be qualified as a co-host. And uh, yeah, so she's, we're looking forward to her. If you didn't catch Car uh, Nika Domi's you know, You know, they, what do they call a, a woman that goes to university? They call her a co-ed, right? So she should be a co-host. A woman that goes to university is a co-ed? Yeah, like a co-ed dorm. <laughs> you know, well, uh, co-ed, co get it? Co-ed <laughs> implies a mixing of genders at the educational Yeah, well, co-host, right, co mixing of genders. Co-ed. Co-ed. Oh, you, you're oh. way too quick for me today. Ed. Okay, okay. co -ed. Oh. Peter Puck wants to point out, Peter Puck being one of our uh, regular viewers, wants to point out that Planet 13 has really only erased its losses from last week. Good point. Right. JG says, hi, Ed. JG. JG says, hi, Ed. Hi, JG. Hi. Hi. So Do you know I. JG? This person seems yeah, to you know, know you. I think so we know. Samey, we know. Samey. We, samey, Samey, it says. Look. Jesus. Jeez. JG. This person's implying pretty intimate knowledge of who you are. Samey. Samey. No. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> Give me a call a little later. <laughs> okay. Let's meet for a drink. <coughs> All right, let's go back to some of the other items uh, permeating the news verse in the case. Now, the, space. The, is the S&P, the broad market, is that up today? I have no idea. I haven't looked. You know what? Tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll look at some other charts other than our own. Okay, the S&P. Look at that. I've got my large screen. SPX. Hmm, can't see that. Let's take that to a advanced take chart. Take it to a new level. Okay, here's the chart. No. No, that's not it. That's not it. Okay, next here's question. Here's what we got to do. <laughs> got to put this in here. Then we got to go over here and go U.S. And let's talk about the S&P, Ed. Well, it, it, it's at an all-time high in the last few days, closing. Yeah. Uh, remarkable when you consider what happened in de last December. Yeah. And it's taken it all-time all highs. No kidding. Um, we're, we're so, just, let's just give me the just give me the number if you can. Is it thir over thirteen fifteen? No, it's three thousand and six as we speak. Okay, three thousand and six twenty. So, it's down eight yeah. percent now on there, or rather down eight, eight points, points. Eight points. Point two seven percent on the okay, day. Okay. So it's given a little back after setting another record high yesterday at thirty thirteen. Um, to what extent at this point, Edward, would you say that the performance of the cannabis indexes are uh, tied to the performance of the broader markets represented by the S&P. What percent? Yeah. Mm. Eh. <laughs> I'll Take say, a wild guess. Oh, 32. <laughs> wow. I win. 32%. You know, we should have had some balloons fall out of the sky with some uh, tchotchkes attached to them. Tchotchkes? Yeah. What are tchotchkes? It's sort of like knickknacks. Knickknacks? Yeah. Oh, I don't, don't you have any knickknacks? Knickknack. Knickknack. Paddywhack. Wow. Look, we've got some birds flying around here. Birds flying high. I think they're buzzards. You know how I, I think feel. they're buzzards. They smell carrion. Wow. 
So, um, Ed, are we going to do our show from uh, Pat Camp tomorrow? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You Depends think? on his liquor supply <laughs> and his pot supply. Well, that's Psh true. Oh, it's legal. Yeah, that's right. You know, there's you, 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 you know, there's no more. You know, why hide? There's no more subterfuge. What's the stigma? Required. No stigma. Stigma? Stigma. <laughs> that's the past. Well, that's the is stigma. When, when you stigma get stuck, is, you can't actually speak properly anymore when you've uh, had enough cannabis. Oh, I can't. That's for sure. Do you do you find yourself having difficulty speaking? Well, that's what afterwards. everybody seems to think. <laughs> they say we know Ed's buzzing. No kidding. Okay. All right. So, uh, well, look at I think we're uh, you know we're we're glad to be at Pat Camp. Yeah, this I'm is glad to be up in Muskoka. You know, I'll tell you that was quite a lunch we just had. Do you think that weed would grow well up in Muskoka? Or there's better uses for real estate in Muskoka than growing cannabis. Well, I want I want to know are you a, a Mis, uh, an Oki from Muskoka? Uh, no, I'm an Oki from Muskoka. No, you're an Oka from Muskoka. <laughs> Say hi to the boys over there. Hey, look hey. who's over there. And here's to our fabulous crew today. Stephen Guevara, Donnell McCorkery, Donald, and Donald. Fraser, <laughs> Donald and Fraser Toms are our crew, have joined us up here in Muskogee. They're gonna get drunk later on tonight and hopefully we'll keep them out of the out of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're tomorrow gonna... we've got uh, a really big show lined up. Yeah, you've got a big interview tomorrow, don't you? Uh, Joe Mimran is joining us tomorrow. I talked to him years ago when he was involved with, uh, yeah, that clothing, clothing. <laughs> Monaco, Club Monaco. Joe Fresh. Club Monaco. Anyways, well, I buy his clothing, that's for sure. Joe Mimran hey. is one of the icons of Canadian fashion marketing and marketing in general. He is a Shark Tank shark and former dragon. And Joe's going to be joining us tomorrow afternoon for a conversation. Um, he's joined the board of Chiron Life Sciences. We're going to ask him what... It, what is to be inferred from his joining the board of Chiron Life Sciences? Now, I know. What's that? My, here's my guess. Here's your theory. They're going to start using hemp to make clothing. I think they've been doing that for a while, Edward. Oh. Just a, just a theory. <laughs> who, who there has, who's got hemp clothing? Do you have any hemp clothing? Yeah. Like when I get, you know, the little, you know. That way I know if I'm sort of get lost. Do you have hemp underwear? I have. <laughs> take a bite out of my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> No, Take a butt out of no, your no, you, you get a hemp hat. Okay, hemp hat. Hemp hat. Hemp hat. Like, you know, you get cap hat or cap, hair cap. Okay. What do you call it? Cap hair. Cap hair. Um, so Health Canada has revoked the license of BC cannabis producer Agrima. That's actually news from yesterday, but I hadn't stumbled across that. Did you, do you know Agrima? I've not heard of Agrima, but I suspect they're not publicly traded. So Agrima... Uh, was had their license revoked for unauthorized activities. Now, if Health Canada has, revo has revoked a cannabis license from a non-publicly traded cannabis company for the same unauthorized activities as CanTrust, and they don't revoke CanTrust license, one might argue that there's a two-tiered no, application. No, I, 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 think, I think the fact that it's public, and I think because this has been the biggest ones with, with I think they're really going to make sure they don't do something that would cause undue harm to the shareholders. Hmm. But that's already been done, right? Yeah, that's an interesting theory. Um, Agrima's parent company was Ascent Industries, and Ascent, ha actually this happened quite a while ago. Is, is Ascent now going to be changed to Descent? Ascent, I th believe, is looking to looking for a mining project in BC now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, mining my own business. Yeah, there's our uh, there's our uh, show this afternoon. Now we want you to remind want to remind you to don't forget to click that little bell in the upper right hand corner because that's how you know when we start broadcasting. And we are going to start broadcasting not at regular times, but we're going to sneak up on you. It's going to be by surprise. So if you don't click that bell, you're going to miss it. And we're going to have some impromptu guests from impromptu locations. Big shout out and thanks to our master sponsor, Halo Cannabis, Halo Labs rather, uh, at halocan.com. Uh, check them out. They are trading on the NEO under the symbol H-A-L-O. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter on our website. Stop.